it's all good. All right. So, so we've been talking about power, and um, and power again is work per unit time. It's got units of uh, joules per second or newton meter per second. It, it's also defined as a watt. The relationship between power and torsion is is that power is equal to torque the internal torsion times the angular velocity. Angular velocity is just a, a measure of how fast something is spinning, right? Or rotating, how fast something is rotating. And then the frequency is just another way, it's like a unit conversion from angular velocity to uh, cycles per second. And uh, one cycle is like going around in one circle and that's the same as like one revolution which would be two pi radians, you know, and like, you know, like a revolution, you know, how long does it take for a new government? <laughs> <laughs> All right, and so like here in this video, what we're doing is we're gonna take this power and we wanna relate it to mechanics and material. So there's like some interplay between dynamics and mechanics here, but we're not gonna go too crazy into the angular velocity part. But we're gonna say, okay, if I wanna deliver a certain amount of power, from an engine to let's say like wheels or cars or gears right here how much you know how much torque is going to be transferred through that shaft right and so and that'll give me a sense of how much stress is associated and then i can design okay and so for us the important relationship is if given a power requirement and a angular velocity or frequency or like in a car like an rpm revolutions per minute how do I determine the torque? So for us, we're gonna be using this to get the torque T. This torque is P over omega. And what that means for a shaft, for a shaft, so like here, if I have, let's say here, I'll, I'll just draw like an engine. This is an engine or a motor right here. It's connected right here. And then there's like, you know, like gears attached to this, right? And this is a gear that's turning. And this might be turning like that with due to, to because of the engine here, the motor or the engine <coughs> that's driving this shaft and turning this gear here. And, and basically what we're saying is that if I make a cut and I look at the inside, right here, if I look at the inside, this what is the internal torque that's happening due to the power requirement? Mm -hmm. Okay, and now we're gonna be able to design based on that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so really that's it. And um, uh, let's see. All right, so let's see here. What what do we got? Okay, so so that that's just the you know. So we're gonna to design to design a shaft to design the shaft. One, we're gonna determine the internal torque. Determine internal torque or the internal loading. It's really just like what we've been doing in the past, determine internal loading. And, and so for at least with power problems, that's gonna be associated with this T over P omega, okay? Um, uh, yeah, 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 and, and anyway, that, that, or you know, normally we would cut and look at a free body diagram and determine internal loads, draw an internal torque diagram, and then calculate stresses. Once we have that internal torque, if we wanna design, we could have, we're just gonna apply the BDR, and that BDR is this tau applied less than or equal to tau allow for the shaft that I'm designing, right? When is it gonna break? And here, because we have torsion, the relationship for this applied shear stress would be T times the outer radius or radius of the shaft times J, which would be the polar moment, or divided by J, less than or equal to tau allow towel though okay and so sometimes this if I'm looking at a the cross section of the shaft sometimes like in your textbook the um, the outer radius is labeled C mm -hmm. C is labeled the outer radius and it's they use the the variable C because that's where the maximum shear stress is going to occur on the outer radius and we knew that from our stress distribution so here this row and this J becomes C over pi over, ah, here, you know what? I'm gonna leave it as J. I'll leave it as J right here. And these two properties, the C and the J right here, they are the properties, these are the only geometric properties associated with the cross section. And so really what we're trying to do is solve for this, like this J over C or C over J. So if I rearrange this, 
like this would be t over tau allow less than or equal to uh, j over c. And this j over c, this j over c right here, sometimes, depending on where you wanna look, like sometimes manufacturers will publish this polar moment of inertia over the outer radius, so that you can just choose based on this, and they call this a section modulus, section modulus, and it has units of length cube. And that's it, it's just, and this would be the geometric property, right? But we can use this, you know, you don't have to use J over C, the section modulus, you can just use it to get, to get the radius directly, mm -hmm. right? All right, so that's, that is the relationship between power and torsion in a nutshell, and mm -hmm. designing it, yeah? And so now we just have to do some problems.